everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today, I'm sharing a card project where I used the Gina K Designs Wreath Builder and a stamp set that I designed to create a fun winter wreath. If you've never used a wreath builder, stick around to see how it works. That video is coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using today, and this is my Winter Wishes stamp set, but I wanted to try to do something with my wreath builder. Now I've had the original wreath builder for a very long time, but I bought this probably about a year ago, had not used it. So I'm going to be using the new wreath, wreath. it actually says wreath builder. Um, it is supposed to say wreath. Oh, sometimes I just can't, you know, I just can't, but I want the larger size and I am going to try to Get, get a little crafty with this thing and using a larger piece of paper, or not a larger piece, but just getting more out of my out of my wreath builder. So let me get my Misty and we'll get set up to do some stamping. I've got my original Misty, but I need to take my grip mat out because of the quick turns of the wreath builder. I don't need this to be as sticky. And this is probably the only time I think about taking it out and it is, it's really stuck in there. So I'm just gonna gently peel this out and then I'm going to place my Misty mouse pad back in. However, when I do this, I use tape and here, I guess I'll just do maybe a few pieces. Sometimes the Misty mouse pad can slide around a bit and I want it to stay without moving like that. Now I'll bring in my wreath builder here and I'm just going to put this right down here in the center right center it and then I'm going to tape this as well because then this won't move and we will have the same positioning every time so if I were to stick this down on the grip mat it would hold beautifully but I just don't want to have to be unsticking my paper every time I like the fast turning of the wreath builder. So we're just putting that in just to hold it in place, right? That won't move. I'm gonna take this piece of four inch by five and a quarter cardstock, and I'm actually going to adhere it to the little template insert piece. I'm just gonna put these in the center because that's gonna be enough to hold it. I'm not stamping anything in the center right now that I know of, um, but what I'm going to do is just line this up right here and press, okay? So that way I know pretty much how I'm gonna start this. Well, it's always a crapshoot. I feel like I feel like the wreath builder can, for me, it's like you don't know what's gonna happen and that's part of the fun. So what I'm going to do is grab one of my already well-loved stamps here and I think I'm gonna just start in a little that. Okay, we'll put you right about here. And what I'm going to do is see how this comes together on this wreath, okay? And we'll see, it could overlap, I don't, I don't quite know. And I'm gonna grab a magnet just to hold this for making sure that we are in locked and good. Oh, I'm gonna start out with a color here. This is cheeky. And see if we can keep our fingers clean. We're just gonna ink up our cheeky and bring it down for our first part of the wreath. Okay, I'm gonna do two on each one as I work my way around for a nice impression. Pick up the magnet, pick up the paper, turn it one turn right there, lock it in, magnet, and let's see where this one falls. Oh, that's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. Okay, pick it up, nothing's moved. And the next layer. So I'm gonna speed this up and go all the way around with the turn and stamp.
right, I have the first layer done and I'm just gonna let this dry for just a few minutes because the positively saturated inks do have a higher viscosity. So before I stamp on the center detail, and I'm just gonna put it right back in this position where I started, I am going to just let that dry so that there's no feathering at all when it comes time to stamp the next little piece, which is really pretty easy to line up. I don't even, I don't even know if there's like, I know there's a will, there's a way, there's a will. You're just gonna get it right in the center. I'm gonna pick it up, but I am going to just wait a second and let this dry. The next color I'm going to use is the blush. And I'll just lightly ink this up, bring it down. I'm not gonna press too hard. I don't wanna squish these little details. I just want them to show up right here in the center. And again, I'm gonna work my way around, but I'll just do that off camera because you've seen how the turns work. And I'm gonna add all of these centers in. All right, I'm just showing you the very last stamping that I've turned on. And again, bring this down and try not to get my fingers coated with red ink. I already got some ink down there, but I think that's okay. Cause I still don't know how I'm gonna be doing this, but now I have little details in here. So I'm gonna put this back in what is my starting position and let me get some greenery figured out. I'm gonna place one here and I'm only gonna do one at a time because I was gonna do multiple leaves, but I want to make sure that I'm getting the wreath how I want it. I'm gonna use the new cabbage color from Simon Says Stamp. We just released a new trio, and it's exciting to have greens in our positively saturated inks that we did not have before, and I'm very excited about this color. These are sort of a nice, mossy, earthy tone. And so I am going to work my way around until I have all of these, then I'm gonna bring in another leaf. And I'll just show you the last turn here. And again, I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the ink. I tell you, when you're wreath building, it's hard. It's hard with the larger pads, but I really am excited about this green color. So we're finishing off the first layer here with the cabbage. So now I have this lovely presentation <laughs> like that. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the parts of the stencil that got some of the green, as well as getting this cleaned up too, and any of the green that's on the edge here. And then I'll pick out another green leaf thing. This may or may not work, but you know what? That's why we try. I am going to fill in some of the center of the wreath and part of the reason I'm gonna do this is because I am gonna have a greeting in the center, but now I'm gonna give this a try and just try the darker. So we're gonna go artichoke. This is another new color from Simon. Ink up, bring down, stamp. And this way we're filling out a little detail. I'm not completely sure where this is gonna go, but you know, I'm gonna work my way around, right? And stamp this to fill out more of the wreath. So again, as soon as I've got all these in place, I'll come back and you can see how the wreath is looking. And again, you know, I have no idea how it's all gonna come together, but we're getting there because my greeting is gonna be in the center. It almost looks like it's a little, um, like a little uh, spider web of greens, but I have an idea to fill in more of the wreath. To add some more color, I'm gonna just stamp these berries that actually don't, that like they go on a different piece, right? They go on a stem, but I wanna have some detail here. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the pucker, which is the darker of the reds. And I'm going to put some internal berries all the way around just for, uh, like I said, just for a little added detail, not for any kind of realistic, uh, the berries go here. Does that make sense? So I think with a wreath, you can kind of do whatever you want. So let me get these all down to have that little extra pop in the center. 
Next, I'm going to take that same color. I was going to do something different in the centers, but you know what? I am not. I'm going to do the pucker ink right in the center to just give those a little oomph. And I think this will look great. So again, ink up, stamp the centers, give it a little more and work my way around so that I might even hit that three times just so they're really dark without squishing. So then we have berries in the center. Let me get all those added and then a couple more things. The thing that's so cool about wreath builders is you can just keep going and you don't have to stop. I think what I want to do here is take another bit of the cabbage and just go around with a little more greenery. Now, I don't even know, like I probably could skip but I think this could look nice to have a bit more detail. So let me see how this bad boy works out. We'll stamp it and I'll see you back here in just a second. So I feel like that's enough, right? Because I'm gonna put a greeting in the center and I think probably what I'm gonna do is do winter wishes because it's so big and beautiful and it will look lovely on here. And this is just an example of taking something that was never really designed for a wreath builder. You can wreath build anything. And the wreath builder is one of those tools that I feel like every time you come back to playing with it, you forget how much fun it is and how you can create something different every time. So let me stamp and emboss my greeting and we'll finish out the card. So I'll go ahead and pick up Winter Wishes. I'll just leave this mat in for now. I'm gonna take some anti-static powder from Simon Says Stamp. Oh, see it doesn't stick as much with the, I'm so used to the grip mat now, but this will work just fine. Clear embossing ink. I'm using the Versamarch just because my pad is a little dry. And sometimes it works really nicely for this because this is kind of delicate and I don't want to over stamp it. But I think that stayed in the right place. All right, let's run my fingers over that. Let that transfer. Let me grab a piece of paper that I can pour my embossing powder into. I'm going to do this in gold. I'm going to use my Brutus Monroe Gilded. So let's see here. How does that look? Oh, that looks great. Yep. That's why we put anti-static powder on. If you ever wonder like, why do people powder up so much with that other tool? It lets all of the other powder just fall off your paper. And that's really nice if you want a clean greeting. All right, let's funnel this back in and I'll get my heat tool warmed up so we can melt the powder. That looks lovely. So now I have my nice shiny greeting. Let me get the coordinating die. I will cut that out and I'm gonna cut out maybe two more layers just to give it some dimension. Couple more things. I am actually going to possibly, let's see. I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit using one of my layer dies. Let me run that through and then I'm going to put a little gold spatter on. So I want to add a little shine and you know me, I mean, I look at how much I've used of this bottle already. I love this stuff, but if you don't want to deal with brushes or anything like that, there is another little product, Shimmer Splash Gilded. Now this is a little different, um, but what you can do with this, once we get all sh shake, shooken up, it comes with its own brush. It's like a little nail polish brush. So you can just pop on color like this just by tapping into the bottle and just kind of flicking it down. Now it's not as, I don't think it comes out quite as, what is the word? Um, spattery, like tiny blobs, but the more you do it, the more it will come out. So I'm just adding a little here, right? Just to have some around the card and you just kind of keep going until you think, yeah, that looks pretty 
darn good. I'm trying to get some up here and I can't. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close it. And it's, it's so tiny. Like it's just, it's just like a little BB, but it's also in the color gilded. So now I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to put some foam tape on the back. So we're just got a little spatter on there for a little, little shine. And then we'll finish the card. I grabbed a piece of Simon Says Stamp green leaf, which I think is going to be the perfect color card base for this. Looks really nice with the new cabbage ink and the artichoke. So we'll score it right here at five and a half using my score buddy, or as my husband calls it, a scur buddy. No idea why. Oh, Dan, if you, again, I'm going to talk about this for the next few videos, but if you have not seen the video where my husband did a voiceover for one of my videos, yeah, I'll pop a link up here. It's, uh, well, it's worth its weight in gold. All right, let's get some foam tape on the back of my, now, I don't know if you can see that now, but see how the shine is coming in there? I know I can catch it. It's there. It's just so hard in these lights, but we're going to get foam tape on the back. I'm going to do some Big Mama tape roll and pop on our greeting and a few embellishments. Took the backers off here. Let's make sure we're putting this on top. And I'm just going to pop this right down with that nice little bit of framing green leaf cardstock in the background. Oh, I love that. It really brings the greenery to life. And now I'm going to take, I am putting foam squares on the back here. I just thought, you know, I do, I do like this, the, the pop-up that you get because it throws a nice little shadow, but I did double up this greeting. So there is an extra layer in cardstock behind it. But what I'm going to do is I will grab a little bit of my liquid glue. So let's take our connect glue here. I'm going to put a little, I've got some on my tweezers there, just a little bead on each foam square. Just gives me a second while I'm placing. And then Winter Wishes is going to go right in the center of my wreath that I created myself by stamping. Oh, it's just so fun. Okay, let me bring in my T-square. Just want to make sure I have that straight. And that looks pretty straight. Oh, that's so fun. I mean, look at that. That's just stamping. And sometimes it is so fun to just have some stamping. We have some shiny spatter. Let's add just a little more shine. Something in the middle of all of my flowers. That is a total afterthought because I've already, you know, I've stamped some things in here, but I feel like this is actually really cute. And I'm going to do it. Okay. And that's the finished card project. I wasn't filming when I booped them down. So I'm sorry for that. But I, I've been, I don't know. I'd like to blame it on the technology, but I think I have to blame it on me. But that's my finished card project. And again, it's got that beautiful spatter. There you go. You can kind of catch it right there. I just thought that was a cute way, again, using the wreath that I built with the wreath builder that helps, you know, line everything up. Wreath builders are so fun to play with. Even if you don't have wreath builder specific stamps, you can take stamps from any set you have and build it out. So if you've never played with a wreath builder, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's a really well-priced item and it's so fun to have in your crafty stash. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you, so hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day. To see a few more cards I created using the Reef Builder, check out the two thumbnails I have linked below, and I'll see you in those videos.